Oscar Gukarski. Um, whatever happened in an interview, and we're probably creating a buzz that people are going to be going to look for it now, so Go Fight Live might be appreciative of the, the attention they're going to get from this. But whatever it was, it was an interview with Karski, but it sure did aggravate May. Now I have to find out what that is. Well, by all means, even if that's your impetus to go to uh, Go Fight Live, it's a great site, great fight content all the time on GoFightLive.com. So whatever it takes to get you there, go. Once you get there, you'll like everything you see. A lot of good action, including tonight's. If anyone finds the link to what happened, please send it to me on Twitter, at RJ Clifford MMA. Looking at the entrance now of Mehdi Baghdad. Seven wins, three losses. This is a catch weight of 158 pounds. Three five minute rounds for our main event. We'll be taking on Dionisio Ramirez. Dionisio Ramirez has the same exact record. Seven wins, three losses. And Baghdad coming in on short notice, replacing Ernest Chavez, who's not be able to fight. Two very good camps coming in. We got Team Quest and Henderson's version of Team Quest, the Temecula version of Team Quest, and Baghdad and Benicio Ramirez, training partner and teammate of Cub Swanson UFC featherweight. So two very good training camps, a lot of gr very good training partners for both these fighters coming into our main event. Bad be the level. Just a quick moment, two again. Mention some of our sponsors here, TV.com. You can watch and listen to us live, in-house or out. Here, H-E-A-R, TV.com. BeFirstClothing.com. CNP Performance. Jawflex.com. TerrorTrucks.com. Budweiser, the king of beers. MyMortgageFighter.com. GoPro, be a hero. Meridian Day Spy here live in the facilities of the Commerce Casino, OC Wheel and Tire, Rev Gear, and our production team at Studio 33 Production and Liquid Events. Can we see Medi Baghdad and Dionisio, the Soldier of the Sun Ramirez? With the understated and classy traditional entrance, a jogging suit, small entourage, but kind of a speak softly and carry a heavy handed corner man type of thing with yeah. Up Swanson. Up Swanson, yeah. We got to talk to Cub earlier tonight, too. His career uh, looking good, looking up. A talented guy who really caught his way up to, to notoriety. He's always been a rising talent, and he's finally gotten his opportunity now to be able to start showing that that he's that good. Yeah, and it's and it's been coming a long time. I've had a, I've seen we've been obviously you know in the Southern California grappling circles. We've been in the same circles for several years, and yeah, I've seen him around all the time. And I had an opportunity to do a feature on him for uh, an MMA magazine, and really got to see where he's from. You know, he spent time. Uh, Juvenile Hall, turned his life around, found mixed martial found jiu jitsu, and then found MMA. And he came from a rough area of Palm Springs where, you know, most of his you know, standard story of kids who come up in that, he thinks he'd probably be dead or in jail. He didn't find something to find focus for him. And now, not only has he found focus, but his brother, Steve Swanson, is now a mixed martial arts fighter, has found focus. All the other kids he's helped. So if you, it just goes to show you one guy that's turning it around can completely change things for a lot of people. Well, Thanks we're going to turn this heads. fight around into a fight. Mike Bell, ring announcer, is going to get this one started. This is our main event, Baghdad versus Ramirez. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for our main event of the evening. So before we get the action started, I have one more thing to say. Commerce California, are you ready? I'm ready. Introducing first fighting out of the blue corner. His official weight, 159 pounds. Fighting out of Team Quest. Please welcome from the south of France, Mehdi the Sultan Baghdad. And now let's welcome his opponent across the cage in the red corner. His official weight, 156 pounds. Fighting out of true MMA. Let's welcome from Indio, California, 
Dionisio, the soldier of the sun, Ramirez. Three five minute rounds. Oh, I've been over the rules already. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves now if you want. At the sound of the bell, come on out and handle your business. Let's go. When Mike Beltran talks, electricity goes out. Maybe it was static electricity in the mustache. <laughs> could be anything, really, could short it out. Our main event, let me say this too, before I see anything that Mehdi Baghdad, the Sultan, does, kudos to him for taking the fight, for stepping up, taking on a guy like Dionisio Ramirez. He's got a good record, 7-3 like Ramirez, and he's, he's coming in on short notice, so that is what a fighter truly does. And it's a great opportunity. Main event, bad beat 11 against a good fighter like Dionisio Ramirez. When opportunity knocks, you got to answer. Big leg kick by that guy. And I saw him walking around earlier, too, and you never get the impression from him at all before the fight, before the event tonight, that he wasn't ready or that he was kind of like, you know, what's going on here? And seemed fully prepared. He had accepted the decision he made to be here. Good left hook by Baghdad. Many the Sultan Baghdad wearing the black trunks with the white trim and the bad boy eyes, signature eyes on the rear. And Dionisio, soldier of the sun, Ramirez, we're in the all black tight shirts also, but with the gray band. If it's easier to distinguish red glove tape for Ramirez, blue glove tape for Baghdad. Good double jab pump there by Ramirez. Baghdad's got a nice tight guard, nice conservation of movement. Recovery of his bounce. Ramirez is starting to know that that leg, that leg kick is where Baghdad's going to go a lot in this fight. And you can tell Ramirez has his strong legs like you can see his thighs and hamstrings it's really big yeah that's, that's actually a detriment when it comes to absorbing kicks because you have so much more meat there to hit and to bruise and for the blood to gather up and to get more sore if you can really take away the strength of the of the legs of ramirez with leg kicks fact that's you know, basically it's putting like money in the bank and in interest for later on the later rounds interesting reminiscent uh to me almost of a, of a young frank shamrock one of the best in the business at it, before people even knew there was a business at it. Yeah, he was he was the original pound for pound king before there was a St. Pierre or Anderson Silva. Because it was a cut on the right right side of the head of uh, Baghdad. Ramirez in a scramble. Baghdad uh, threw a nice elbow, landed, I'm not sure how flush, and then Ramirez is trying to make him pay for it now. Ramirez is Baghdad scrambling, and then on a deep double leg. Switching to a single. He gets Baghdad down, but he's in a good position to get back up. Yeah, Baghdad really made that a less uh, severe situation for himself than it could have been. Great defense by Baghdad. He could have been in a lot worse position. Ramirez is thinking of going for that head and arm throw, the way he was positioning his body. Uh, the cut on the back of the head of Baghdad right there, that's... Not in a, in a horrible spot necessarily, but it looks like it's bleeding pretty steadily. And if his head's forward like that, it's going to start bleeding down towards the eyes and the mouth. His corner's going to have to get on that right away. He's got a minute and 20 seconds left to endure it. But Ramirez with his back turned for a kick. Back there with a tie clinch now. We're going to do some damage on the inside. Big up elbow, elbow to end. body kick. Nice yeah, by back did nice kick to the midsection. Both fighters opening up a lot more here in the waning minutes. Ramirez really reacts and comes alive when he gets hit clean. 
almost as if he was told, all right, the other guy's not allowed to touch you. And as soon as he does, he's like, what? And he opens up a lot. work here, a little dirty boxing by Ramirez, pressuring Baghdad. Baghdad continues to go to that tight clinch knee offense, which is good to do when you're a long, lanky guy, taller than your opponent. Makes it much easier to bring that knee up and do damage. Fun first round here in the main event. Yeah, and he threw a lot of elbows too, which was a really good offensive move for him. He landed some of them. And AC's corner tending to that cut. The cut uh, didn't really continue to bleed poorly or a lot uh, after the point we noticed it starting to open up. So if his corner can take advantage of that, it didn't it didn't get hit obviously more where because of where it is. It looked like it was gonna just continue to drip down, but it, it didn't really have a factor, it'd make itself a factor in the rest of that round. That elbow by uh, the, the Ramirez kind of shucked Bagak down. Ramirez is doing a good job of mixing up clinch, takedown, and strikes. Whereas Bagdad was kind of doing more striking, Muay Thai clinch, good stuff. But Ramirez seems to be more scrambly, more, more likely to mix in a lot more elements of mixed martial arts more often. Second round of action. Dionisio, Soldier of the Sun Ramirez. He's in the tight black shirt with the gray waistband and the red tape on the gloves. The black with the white and the bad boy signature eyes on the back. Blue tape gloves. That's Mehdi the Sultan Baghdad. I like his knee or leg. He's either knee or kick. First shot followed by the elbow that Baghdad's throwing in combination. Yep, Chip it away with those elbows on the inside too there. That's one of my favorite combinations in mixed martial arts is you throw that lead knee and when they drop their hands in to defend the knee, you come right over the top with a punch or an elbow. He's throwing he's throwing elbows almost in, in a way you would see a John Jones fight when he really lets it go. Like he's using it tactically. Well, it's a skill I'm sure he learned from his coach Cub Swanson because Cub has just had chronically terrible hands that continue to break whenever he fights. And he's been forced to use his elbows. He's won fights with both hands broken. And that's left with his only, and if you want, if he's going to strike with his arms, all the only limbs he's got left is his elbows. Something you're, you know, you're forced to train in mixed martial arts when you start running out of weapons. Get more clinch work from Ramirez. More tie clinch work from Baghdad. Great knees. Knee by Baghdad. Baghdad Multiple lands two Baghdad. good knees. Ramirez might have been hurt there. He dropped the level for the takedown, but Beautiful gives up his back. Baghdad, Baghdad right into a choke right choke. in. That was such a fantastic sequence by Baghdad. Dionisio Ramirez went in for a single leg or like a, with a, the head on the outside. Baghdad went for right, went for a switch, went right to the rear naked choke, and that's it. Wow. What a beautiful, brilliant series of events for Eddie Baghdad. Like I said. Ramirez was in on the single leg. Baghdad took the switch right away, immediately went for the rear naked choke, failed the first time, and just a few seconds later able to sneak it in for the second round submission in the main event. I like the Bad guy for taking the fight. I like him even more for what he did after he won it. Beautiful. He held up Ramirez's arm and pointed to him like, look at that guy, even though he just finished the fight. Couple knees and watch this. Watch this switch, the head's on the outside, goes right to taking his back and immediately goes for a rear naked choke. Ramirez is forced to be immediately on the defensive. He can't worry about getting out. He gets out of the first one, but Baghdad just relentless on him. Comes back a second time, and that's the first thing you learn in jujitsu practice. If someone has your back, you staple your chin to your chest so you can't get rear naked choked. And Baghdad's still able to pull it off. That was our main event. Medi Baghdad also pulls off the second victory for the blue corner tonight.
him and Arturo Turtle Ramirez. We'll get the official particulars from ringing out to Mike Bale, and then RJ Clifford will get some words with Mehdi the Sultan of Baghdad. You've been watching Bama USA's Bad Beat number 11. The main event just wrapping up there. And once again, a fight card that was really stacked from top to bottom. We're going to get now the official word. We have our referee, Mike Beltran, holding the combatants' hands. Mike Bell's going to read it to us. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout ends at 1 minute and 53 seconds of round number two. Referee Mike Beltran stops this bout for your winner by tap out submission due to a rear naked choke, Mehdi the Sultan Baghdad. All right, I'm here with your winner, Mehdi Baghdad. Happy guy. You came in on just, I believe, two days' notice when you got the phone call from Brett Roberts saying, hey, you're gonna take this fight, main event. It's only two days away. What was going through your mind? I was, uh, I was tired. Normally I go more fast. So I don't believe my cardio. But I train every day, I'm a fighter. It's no just, uh, oh, I'm not ready. I was ready. I train every day. Fighter here in America, you have to train every day. I was ready, really tough fighter. For me, I think I go finish more fast. It's really tough to touch me three, four times. I like fight like that. And uh, thank you, Brent, for giving me this fight because uh, two years I'm here in America. Nobody wants to fight. This tough guy wants to fight me. I'm really appreciative. So thank you very much. Uh, see you next time. I'll come back. I'm okay, all guys. Get up your winner, Mehdi Baghdad. All right, I'm here. Ramirez, you were supposed to have a title shot tonight. Unfortunately, your opponent wasn't able to take it. Uh, you still took the fight. You still fought someone, even though he was coming on short notice. You had a new opponent on short notice. Talk about this whole situation where it led you to. Uh, um, two months out, you know, we were told that uh, we would be able to fight EJ. You guys know EJ. He is my height. He's a straight wrestler, a grinder type fighter. Uh, my whole camp was revolved around that. I stayed away from tall strikers because uh, EJ was not that particular person or that fighter. Um, you know, I did read about him. He is a very tough guy. Uh, he's coming up, uh, travel all over the world to train, um, and he's never come fighter. And for me, I couldn't turn it down because you know my family sacrificed so much. You know, with you know with everything for me to walk away from it. You know, it was. Uh, you know, it just wasn't in the book. It's, it's not, I can't be turned away down fights like that. Um, that was tough, it was a, uh, you know, I rolled the dice, uh, you know, I was hoping I would win, and it would, uh, you know, open other doors. Um, you know, for me, I felt like I gave up. Uh, you know, nothing, taking away, nothing, taking away nothing from him. I just felt like um, I could have pushed the pace more. I just think I just felt the happiness of the way we were training because we're trying to keep the distance, keep keep our, uh, you know, to keep away. You know, one shot, two shots. This guy, he's a kicker. As you see, he's throwing the elbows, and it kind of threw me off because you know I heard he was from Team Quest. Thought it, you know maybe he was a good wrestler, but um, you know that wasn't you know that wasn't the case. Um, but hey, man, I'm gonna come back stronger. You know, you check me out. Um, you know, this I plan on on, on I'm, I plan on I'm following Cubs footsteps. He's uh, my mentor. You know, Cub, he went through a lot of stuff to the bottom, and look where he's at now. He's the top four in the world in the UFC. Um, so mark my words, people out there, and whoever sees this, you know, 155, I'm here to stay, and I'm going to force you to reckon with. Um, and, and this stuff, this, this type of weak performance is not going to happen again. Um, I'll be ready for anything. Um, and I'm sorry to my wife, to my daughter, to all my family, my team that I let down. Um, this is a big let down for me, so... Uh, I just I'm just tired. I'm getting back, you know, come back stronger, you know, come back with the visions. Well, the good thing is I talked to Brett Roberts. You will still be getting your title shot, so stay tuned to see you again. Let's give it up for both fighters in tonight's main event. Give it up for all the fighters that brought you Bad Beat 11. 
classy show of words by Ramirez. You know, the one thing he said that I'll, I'll never be in league with Remember, the fighters we'll sometimes say is he apologized for 